All right, you guys are in for a treat tonight because my boy, Jason Lutz from the LootShop.com has signed up to do a guest shave. No, he's not going to do a guest shave. It's something better than that. Take a look at this, guys. Now, this is a one-of-a-kind, hand-turned. This wood is from the bat of a Louisville slugger right from Kentucky. Now I asked my boy, Jason Lutz, who owns and operates LootShop.com to create this for me. And he did, it's a beautiful safety razor, three piece safety razor. And it's just a one of a kind, just the one of a kind. And the treat tonight is that you get to watch Jason create one of these razors. He's going to show us how he does it. And not only that, guys, if you watch till the end, you're going to find out how you may be able to possibly get your own safety razor. Similar to this. This one's mine. So without further ado, without wasting more time, let's kick it off to Jason. Take it away, Jason. Tony wanted me to uh, to shave my beard off um, for the video. And as you can see, I don't have a very thick beard. It takes me a long time to grow a beard. And it, as much as I love Tony and love watching his videos, was not going to shave it off. It would take me another year to get back just as thick as I have it now. So what I decided to do was really just to take this few minutes and kind of show you all a little bit about what I do. I'm a woodworker. Um, it's a hobby of mine. It, it keeps me sane um, in a normal world and definitely keeps me sane in this uh, quarantine COVID world. So what I'm going to do today is actually show you all kind of step by step what I do to make a, uh, a hand turned wooden safety razor. And so today we're going to use a, uh, a PSI razor kit. Pretty simple. It comes with really five parts. comes with a uh, seven millimeter brass tube, nothing crazy. Our head for the razor, kind of our um, kind of the head bracket, so blade in between there. A little bushing for the top, and a little decorative bushing for the bottom. And I'll show you all where these come into play here in a minute. The hardest part for me in this process really is the selection of the wood. You know, what do I want to make it out of? And you can see I have you know a handful of different woods here. Most of these woods are woods that I have picked up in my travels. This piece here happens to be sinker cypress from Lake Pachin Trade in New Orleans. Got some pecan I picked up in Texas. A, a little piece of a Louisville Slugger baseball bat. Some olive wood from Israel up in here. Some koa wood from Hawaii. I know we get a lot of uh, people up in the Northeast over here. I've got some really pretty wood. This is a uh, red wood, but actually you can kind of see the water line. This is actually the wood that is reclaimed from the water towers on the top of the buildings in New York City. So I picked this up from a company, New York Slab Company, up in Yonkers when I was up in New York on a recent trip. So fun piece of wood there. For this razor, I'm going to use a brand new piece of wood I picked up a couple weeks ago. So I had the opportunity to, to do a little vacation. I went down to Tulum, Mexico. I always try to pick up wood, as you can see, when I, when I travel around. I picked up this really pretty piece of wood. I, I'm not really sure what it is. I think it's almost maybe a coca bola. I'm not 100% sure. It was some driftwood. I don't know that it's been in driftwood for very long. A little soft like a driftwood here on the sides. You can actually still see sand in the wood. But the actual inside of it, really, really hard. So I don't think it was a, a driftwood for a super long time or it would have been a little softer. So what I've done is really just ran it across my bandsaw and take it off a small piece to use as a, uh, my razor handle. So really simple, what you do, pick out your piece of wood, you're gonna take your copper tube, we're gonna line it up, and then I just take a little Sharpie and mark on my wood, take it over there to the band saw, and I'm gonna chop it off where it's, where it's pretty close to being even. You can see it's not exactly even, but that's okay. I'm gonna trim it down here in a minute. And then put it on the drill press and drilled a seven millimeter hole. 
And so when I put the glue on the, the tube here, it will go in. I will tell you, this wood tends to be very dense. So I'm, I'll probably have to hammer it in just a little bit. Do you have my rubber gloves? Do you have my glasses on? If you don't wear glasses, you want to make sure you've got some safety goggles on. I'm going to use a, uh, a tight bond, instant bond that I pick up. Um, I'm a big fan of, of shop local. And so there's a local store here that I buy a lot of my stuff from Woodcraft. And so I get this from them up the street there. I actually kind of do a little bit of recycling. So when I get the Woodcraft, they, you know, they give me everything in a paper bag. I just tear the paper bags up. And that's what I use for like my glue, uh, you know, my glue pads and stuff. So I don't get glue all over everything. A little bit of glue on my, uh, my copper tube there. We'll take this and we will slide it in and then kind of push down until it's in there good and tight. The next thing I do, and I buy this from the Woodcraft as well, this is a, an activator. We just kind of spray it on that, that glue on both ends and it really dries that glue almost rock hard instantaneous. Now we'll give this about two or three minutes to let it dry on the inside. What's doing that, I'm gonna go over and uh, drill it out and I'll show you that here in just a second. So now that we've actually taken our pin, we, we found our wood, we've cut it, we, we put our copper tube in, the next step is to actually ream the wood. And I've already done it for us, but, but essentially you have this little reamer, it's a seven millimeter kind of a bit as well. And then a, a perfect 90 set of carbide tips. And so we put on the, the drill press and we basically clean both ends. And what it does is it cleans the, the copper, but most importantly, it's, it kind of levels off the copper exactly even with the wood. And so it's a now perfect 90, it's nice and clean, the actual tube is. The next piece is actually to prepare our lathe. Now I just use for, for pin turning and stuff, I use a little small Rikon lathe. Absolutely love this product. I bought it at the Woodcraft. It's super easy to use. Can really do about anything you want. Within the lathe, you're gonna have actually your mandrel. So the mandrel is just really, a, again, seven millimeter tube or, or you know, pipe here. So what we're gonna do is use these bushings in partnership with this mandrel. Now the bushings really are the most important thing to pin turning or razor turning because it really makes it where anybody can be an artist. You take your bushings, put them on each end. So we're gonna do a bushing and then we're gonna do our, our razor down there, another bushing. Now these happen to be the exact same bushing on the front and the back, but on some pins, it may have a, a bigger bushing in the back, a little smaller in the front. A two-part pin may have three different bushings depending on if it's the front, the middle, or the back. We've loosened our lathe up here. We're gonna push it all the way down so it's all good and tight there. The next thing we're gonna do is actually lock it down so this is locked good and tight. I will then loosen up my actual extension here, kind of tighten it good and tight. Tighten this back again. Put our tool rest or our arm on there. And now we are ready to, to pick a tool and actually uh, show you turning this thing. So the next thing we're gonna do is we're going to, uh, to actually turn this. I'm gonna be off camera for the turning piece so I can really get you showing you this. But I did wanna show you how important it is. Safety protection when you're turning. So this will kind of keep wood and sawdust out of my, my eyes and my mouth. And so I'll be ready to go. So first thing we're going to do, and you'll, I'm going to use a couple tools. I'm going to show them to you real quick is just a, a standard gouge, gouge tool. This will let me clean it and really make it round. Now, once I've got it basically round, then I will use a little combination of these little small tools from Easy Wood to, uh, to flatten it out, do a little bit of uh, cleanup with them. A little smaller, a little easier to, to maneuver on such a small piece of wood. And then we will be, uh, be ready to go. We're going to turn it on. I happen to turn at about uh, 3,000 RPMs. Switching the tools a little bit. 
And you can see I'm, I'm holding the tool good and tight on the wrist and really just going across. What we're going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and turn it off. Pull that up so you can help me a little bit better. And we're really just going to kind of look at it here. What you can see what I've done is I've turned it till I'm even with the bushing on both ends. So I know it will clamp down nice and pretty on the, uh, the actual kit. It's a really a gorgeous piece of wood. There was a, um, a knot in the wood, um, you know, just a, an inclusion in the wood that had gotten rotten, probably a wormhole or something, um, either before it was cut or after it was cut when it was floating in the ocean. You can still see that kind of black dot there on the uh, the wood from that inclusion. So that's really pretty as well. Um, gonna just a little bit more on the end here, just kind of kind of taper it down just a hair more. go what a what a really pretty piece of wood um so our next step is going to be to actually sand the wood what we want to do is sand it a little bit now what i do is i usually sand it with six pieces of sandpaper um and they start at 150 grit and go to a 600 grit and i've got them marked on the back one through five and then i know that the the mesh is the 600 grit so we're going to go ahead and uh turn it on One of the things you'll notice when I sand is to make sure I get it nice and smooth because you're going to be holding this in your hand and shaving with it. I want to make sure that it's crisp and clean and uh, no burrs anywhere. So I'll turn when it's turning clock, uh, counterclockwise, I'll sand. I'll stop, flip it to go clockwise, I'll sand, and then I'll finish up counterclockwise again as well. Once I've kind of sanded it, the next thing I want to make sure I do is just, really just look at it, make sure I don't have any sand marks. You don't, you know, you want to make sure it's all nice and smooth. Um, if you've sanded too hard, you could have sand marks. I don't want any of those. Looks really, really good. So really the next part is going to be to actually polish it and finish it. So the next piece of the video, I'm not going to be on screen at all because I really wanted to show you kind of up close the actual finishing of the, uh, the wood. So I happen for this thing and, and for a lot of my razors, I like a, a little product called the uh, the Hut Plastic or or, um, or Hut Wax. It's a really, really hard piece of, uh, of wax. What we're gonna do, we're gonna do this about four times. But the first thing I'm gonna do, turn my, my lathe on, really turn the speed down. I just wanna use a, a, a little rag, dry, and really just kind of buff it make sure I've got all my sawdust, you know, off of there. So nice and clean. The next thing I'm gonna do, turn my speed up and I'm gonna run this down really until it catches. Once it heats up enough, it'll catch and it'll put a wax coat across the top.
Now you see it's kind of got this wax coat across the top. What I'm gonna do now is actually heat it up and really melt that wax in. And then I'm gonna re redo that about three more times. So we have kind of four coats of this heavy wax on top of it. It'll, it'll be solid and, and really be a nice heirloom razor that you can pass down to your kids and grandkids. And what I do is I just find, this is one I've done before, I find a, uh, a clean piece of it, and we're just gonna hold it nice and tight, really hard, and that will melt that wax into it. You can see, we'll do it again. Find us another clean piece of it. Really get it in there. This is super, super hot at this point on the towel. Do that third time here. And then we'll do it kind of one last time. And boy, by this time it is really hot, that wood is. Now, that last time, I, last coat, I'll, I'll buff around a little bit more until I don't see a whole lot of wax coming off. Turn it off. And now you can see we have a nice, gorgeous finish on this, this piece of wood. Man, just really, really smooth and clean. Just a beautiful shine. What we'll do is let that harden just for a couple minutes. Let the, really let it cool off. I'll pull it off and I'll show you the assembly next. So this final step here, I'm gonna do really off camera because I really wanted to show you up close. So this is the assembly piece. It really is simple. We've got our handle. Because our bushings are the same on the front and the back, we need to decide which side's gonna be our top and which side's gonna be our bottom. Looking at it, I, I really love this inclusion and I kind of want the inclusion to be kind of up by the head, be seen. So I'm gonna make this our top and this our bottom. Really simple. So we've got our top. Our top, you can tell, has the screw hole in it because the head is gonna screw into that. The other end is decorative. So what we're gonna do is actually gonna just flip it around, put our decorative in there and We'll kind of push this back just a little bit. Um, and what I kind of like to do is get it kind of sit in there just a little bit like you see there. And then we'll use the compression tool here and really kind of push it in. You know, it doesn't really want to go in straight, but we'll get it in there there in a second. Once you kind of get it going, no problem at all. We just need to move it up a little bit more and boom. Now it's in there good and tight. It'll never ever come off. And we want to do the same thing with the other end. Now this one's a little flat, so we'll use this kind of flat end and leave the, the plastic in for our decorative, hand, decorative end. So we're going to have to back it up just a little bit there. And the same thing. I kind of like to get it lined up a little bit myself first. And then we'll put it in the press. And good and tight. In there nice and smooth. And on the end, nice and smooth. Um, and essentially, we're done. Now all we're gonna do is take a razor blade, stick it in there, screw it on good and tight, and uh, boom. We have created a, uh, a nice safety razor, created out of a piece of driftwood that was picked up in Tulum, Mexico. Check out Tony's videos on how you can win this, uh, this razor he'll be giving away. I want to thank everybody for watching my fun little video. I, I enjoyed the, the woodworking project, so I, I enjoyed showing you a little bit about what I do and how to do them. Um, if you're interested in learning more, man, there are hundreds of videos out there on the internet around, around pin turning and razor turning. I mean, it's a great hobby. I will warn you, it's a very addictive hobby. Um, spend a lot of time and money at the local woodcraft store and buying bushings for every different pin style and drill bits for the different pin styles. But I absolutely love it. I, I, I love the, you know, starting with something raw like this, uh, 
you know, this piece of driftwood and, you know, within 15 minutes having just really a beautiful piece of uh, art that you can use for a lifetime and, and really pass down to kids as well. Um, if you're interested in getting a, a razor yourself or getting one custom made, reach out to me at my website, lutesshop.com. That's L-U-T-Z shop.com. Um, check the bottom of the video from Tony. He'll have a link to my website. Um, he'll also have a, uh, a way to win this. So I'm going to send this to Tony and he'll give it away to, to one lucky viewer of the videos. Um, enjoy it. Um, I don't, re I don't know a, a razor head personally that I recommend, but I, I know Tony has some great ones that he's done videos on. So find a, a razor blade that, that, that he recommends and you like and uh, put it on and you'll be ready to shave. Thank y'all so much for watching. Catch the rest of Tony's videos uh, on the flip side. Wasn't that awesome? And one of you lucky stiffs, one of you lucky viewers is going to get that safety razor. I'm not sure how I'm going to do it. But I'm going to come up with a way to reward a viewer. I have to think about it. But, you know, Jason is going to be sending it to me first. Maybe I'm the lucky viewer. <laughs> Just kidding. Guys, in the next couple of days, I will come up with maybe a drawing, maybe a, a little mini contest, Maybe just a reward to a viewer. I don't know. Or maybe it'll just be random. But come back. Keep pushing play for your chance to win that beautiful razor. I want to thank my boy Jason Lutz from LootShop.com for not only being a great friend, but for being the first sponsor of the show and just showing the love and the support to this community. Get over to LootShop.com. Show them some love. The holidays, Christmas is coming, guys. One of a kind stuff. If you have a piece of wood, an heirloom that's sitting around, maybe in, in a form you don't want anymore, and you want to transform it into a straight razor or a safety razor or some other wood turned trinket, a pen, check them out. One of a kind, guys. All right, as always, guys, I want to thank you for watching. I'll see you next time, which will probably be like tomorrow or the next day. But in the meantime, you know what to do. Keep pushing the play. Right, purse? I've got to clean up. It's not the fun part. <laughs>